Hey everyone, we need to talk about the housing market. Things are looking really bad, worse than 2008 bad. Mortgage rates just hit 7.6%. That's the highest in over 20 years. People are starting to panic, and they should be, because what's coming could be devastating. Remember the housing crash in 2008? Millions lost their homes. Well, uh, get ready for round two. Only this time, it could be even worse. The warning signs are everywhere. Home prices are through the roof. Interest rates are soaring. And the Federal Reserve, they're trapped. They can't raise rates any higher without crashing the entire economy. You often hear people say, house prices always go up, right? Not so fast. They forget about inflation. That's the silent killer of your savings. See, 20 years ago, a gallon of milk cost a buck. Now it's like four bucks. That's inflation. The same thing happens with house prices. We have to adjust for inflation to see the real picture. Let's buy a house cost $200,000 back in 2000. Sounds cheap, right? But in today's money, that's a whopping $356,000. Big difference. That's why just looking at the price tag doesn't tell you the whole story. We need to adjust for inflation. Only then can we see if houses are actually more expensive now than they were years ago. Case-Shiller Index, a century of housing data. There's a fancy index called the Case-Shiller Index. It tracks U.S. home prices all the way back to 1889. And guess what? It's adjusted for inflation. This index shows us that the housing bubble in 2008 was insane. Prices were higher than ever before. But hold on tight because here's the scary part. Today's bubble is even bigger. We're in uncharted territory, folks. Unveiling the truth, the Case-Shiller Index. So how do we know if house prices are actually too high? We use the Case-Shiller Index. Think of it like a giant history book for house prices. It tells us how much houses cost all the way back to 1889. The best part? It adjusts for inflation. That means we can see the real cost of housing over time. No more smoke and mirrors, just the cold, hard facts about the housing market. A blast from the past, housing prices. Since 1889, let's take a trip down memory lane. The Case-Shiller Index shows us that for much of the 1900s, house prices stayed relatively stable. Sure, there were some ups and downs, but nothing too crazy. Then came the 1990s and early 2000s. House prices started to creep up, fueled by low interest rates and relaxed lending standards. But even then, no one could have predicted what was about to hit us. 2008. A bubble for the history books. Remember the housing crash of 2008? It was a disaster. The Seychiller Index shows us just how insane things got. House prices skyrocketed to unprecedented levels. It was a full-blown bubble. People were buying houses they couldn't afford, thinking prices would keep going up forever. We all know how that ended. Millions lost their homes, and the economy went into a tailspin. It was a painful lesson. The current bubble, even bigger and scarier. Fast forward to today. The Case-Shiller Index is flashing red again. House prices have been climbing steadily for over a decade. And guess what? They've now surpassed the peak of the 2008 bubble. That's right, folks. We're in even bigger bubble territory than we were back then. This is not a drill. This is a five-alarm fire. The housing market is on the verge of collapse, and it could be worse than 2008. The interest rate roller coaster, a history lesson. Interest rates aren't always low, you know. In fact, for most of history, they've been much higher than they are today. Back in the 1980s, mortgage rates were through the roof, sometimes even hitting double digits. Can you imagine paying 18% interest on your mortgage? But then something interesting happened. Starting in the 1990s, interest rates began a slow and steady decline. This downward trend continued for decades, making it cheaper and cheaper to borrow money. The calm before the storm, low rates, and the 2008 bubble. These low interest rates had a big impact on the housing market. Suddenly, more people could afford to buy homes. Demand surged, and so did prices. This was especially true in the early 2000s when interest rates plummeted to historic lows. Lenders were practically giving away mortgages like candy, often with little regard for whether borrowers could actually afford them. This perfect storm of low rates and loose lending standards created the infamous housing bubble that burst in 2008. The Fed's gamble, slashing rates after the crash. When the housing bubble burst, the economy went into a tailspin. 
To prevent a complete meltdown, the Federal Reserve, or the Fed for short, took drastic measures. They slashed interest rates to near zero in an attempt to stimulate borrowing and spending. This move did help to stabilize the economy, but it also had unintended consequences. With interest rates so low, borrowing money became incredibly cheap. And you know what people like to do with cheap money? Buy houses. 2011 to present, a bubble inflates again. The housing market has been on a roller coaster ride, and it seems we are once again heading towards a peak that many fear could lead to another dramatic fall. And so the stage was set for another housing bubble. The conditions were ripe, low interest rates, high demand, and a limited supply of homes. These factors combined to create a perfect storm, driving prices higher and higher. From 2011 to the present, home prices have been on a tear. It's been a relentless climb, with each year seeing new record highs. Buyers have been scrambling to get in before prices rise even further, creating a sense of urgency and competition that only fuels the fire. According to the Case-Shiller Index, real home prices have risen by a staggering 66% during this period. This index, which tracks changes in the value of residential real estate, provides a clear picture of just how dramatic the increase has been. This rate of appreciation is simply unsustainable. Experts warn that such rapid growth cannot continue indefinitely. At some point, the market will have to correct itself, and when it does, the consequences could be severe. It's like blowing up a balloon until it's about to pop. And guess what? We're seeing the same signs that preceded the last housing crash. Over-leveraged buyers, speculative investments, and a general sense of euphoria that often signals a market top. We're not just talking about a slow and steady increase. The pace of price growth has been nothing short of explosive. In some markets, prices have doubled or even tripled in just a few short years. The pace of price growth has been accelerating in recent years, even surpassing the rate of growth during the lead-up to the 2008 crash. This has led many to wonder if we are on the brink of another major downturn. The similarities are striking, and the potential for a repeat of history is all too real. Buyers are feeling the pressure. With prices rising so quickly, many are rushing to purchase homes before they become even more unaffordable. Aww. This sense of urgency is driving demand even higher, creating a vicious cycle that only exacerbates the problem. On the supply side, builders are struggling to keep up. The construction of new homes has not been able to match the pace of demand, leading to a shortage of available properties. This imbalance between supply and demand is a key factor in the rapid price increases we are seeing. Real estate experts are sounding the alarm. Many are warning that the current trajectory is unsustainable and that a correction is inevitable. They point to the lessons of the past, urging caution and prudence in the face of what appears to be an overheated market. For many potential buyers, the dream of home ownership is slipping out of reach. As prices continue to climb, affordability becomes a major issue. Wages have not kept pace with the rising cost of housing, making it increasingly difficult for average families to buy a home. The question on everyone's mind is, when will the bubble burst? History has shown that what goes up must come down, and the housing market is no exception. The signs are there, and the warnings are clear. It's only a matter of time before the market corrects itself, and when it does, the impact could be far-reaching. Economic analysts are closely watching the situation. They are considering various scenarios and potential outcomes, from a mild correction to a full-blown crash. The uncertainty is palpable, and the stakes are high. The housing market is a critical component of the broader economy, and any significant disruption could have wide-ranging effects. In the meantime, buyers, sellers, and investors are all trying to navigate the uncertain landscape. Some are taking a wait-and-see approach, while others are making moves to protect themselves from potential losses. The market is in a state of flux, and everyone is bracing for what comes next. As we stand on the precipice of what could be another major housing market event, one thing is clear. The lessons of the past must not be forgotten. The housing market is cyclical, and while the current boom may seem unstoppable, history has shown that it is only a matter of time before the cycle turns. The key is to be prepared and to approach the market with caution and awareness. The perfect storm, factors fueling the current crisis. So, what's driving this madness? Well, it's a combination of factors. First, we have those historically low interest rates we talked about. They might be starting to rise now, but they've been at rock bottom levels for over a decade, fueling demand and inflating the bubble. Second, we have a shortage of housing inventory. 
there simply aren't enough homes to meet the demand, which is only pushing prices higher. And finally, we have good old-fashioned speculation. People are buying houses, not to live in, but to flip for a profit. This speculative frenzy is only adding fuel to the fire. Let's talk about bubbles. Remember those? We've seen this movie before, and spoiler alert. It doesn't end well. A bubble happens when prices rise way faster than they should, driven by speculation and hype rather than actual value. Think of it like a game of musical chairs. Everyone scrambling to buy, convinced they'll be left standing when the music stops. But eventually, the music does stop. And when it does, those left holding the bag are in for a world of hurt. The year was 2011. The dust had settled from the 2008 crash, and the economy was slowly starting to recover. Interest rates were still at historic lows thanks to the Fed's efforts to stimulate growth. But lurking beneath the surface, a new crisis was brewing. Fueled by cheap money and a fear of missing out, investors started pouring back into the housing market. Demand outstripped supply, and prices began to creep up. At first, it seemed like a welcome rebound. But little did we know it was the start of something far more sinister. Fast forward to today. What started as a gradual uptick has morphed into a full-blown frenzy. House prices have gone through the roof. Remember the Case-Shiller Index? That trusty barometer of the housing market? Well, it's flashing red again. Since 2011, real home prices have surged by a mind-boggling 66%. That's right, 66%. This is not normal growth, folks. This is a runaway train headed straight for a brick wall. Let's be clear, this level of price growth is simply not sustainable. It's detached from reality. Wages haven't kept pace with these astronomical price increases. People are being priced out of their own communities, forced to choose between rent they can't afford and homes they can't buy. And the worst part? This bubble is built on a foundation of sand. As interest rates rise and the economy slows, the cracks are starting to show. The music is about to stop, folks. And when it does, it's going to be a bloodbath. Let's talk about something called the yield curve. Sounds complicated, right? Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Basically, the yield curve is a fancy graph that shows you how much interest you get for lending money to the government for different periods of time. Normally, this curve slopes upwards. That means you get a higher interest rate for lending money for a longer time. Makes sense, right? But sometimes, something strange happens. Huh. The yield curve inverts. And that's when things get really interesting. When short-term borrowing costs, more D, RHA, the inverted yield curve. An inverted yield curve means that short-term interest rates are actually higher than long-term rates. That's like the world turned upside down. Why is this a big deal? Because historically, an inverted yield curve has been a very reliable predictor of recessions. Think of it like this. When investors see an inverted yield curve, they get spooked. They start to worry that the economy is headed for a downturn. And guess what? They're usually right. In fact, every recession in the past 50 years has been preceded by an inverted yield curve. Coincidence? I think not. The Fed's Dilemma, a tightrope walk. Ah. Now, let's talk about the Federal Reserve, or the Fed for short. The Fed is one of the most influential institutions in the world, and its decisions can have far-reaching consequences for the global economy. They're like the conductors of the economy, trying to keep everything running smoothly. Imagine an orchestra where each instrument represents a different part of the economy. The Fed's job is to ensure that all these instruments play in harmony, creating a symphony of economic stability. One of their main tools for doing this is setting interest rates. Interest rates are like the tempo of the orchestra. They can speed things up or slow things down. When the economy is booming, they raise rates to keep inflation in check. Higher interest rates make borrowing more expensive, which can cool down an overheated economy and prevent prices from rising too quickly. Conversely, when the economy is slowing down, they lower rates to encourage borrowing and spending. Lower interest rates make it cheaper to borrow money, which can stimulate investment and consumption, helping to revive economic growth. But right now, the Fed is in a tough spot. The current economic landscape is fraught with challenges and uncertainties. They've been raising rates aggressively to combat inflation, which is at a 40-year high. Inflation erodes purchasing power, making it more expensive for people to buy goods and services. The Fed's goal is to bring inflation down to a manageable level without causing too much disruption. 
but they also know that raising rates too much could trigger a recession. A recession is a period of economic decline, characterized by falling GDP, rising unemployment, and reduced consumer spending. The Fed must tread carefully to avoid tipping the economy into a downturn. It's a delicate balancing act, and right now, it seems like they're walking a tightrope without a safety net. The stakes are incredibly high and the margin for error is slim. Every decision they make is scrutinized by economists, policymakers, and the public. Historically, the Fed has faced similar dilemmas, but the current situation is unique due to the unprecedented economic conditions brought about by the global pandemic. The pandemic has disrupted supply chains, altered consumer behavior, and created new economic challenges that the Fed must navigate. Moreover, the Fed's decisions have global implications. As the world's largest economy, the United States' monetary policy can influence economic conditions in other countries. A rate hike in the U.S. can lead to capital outflows from emerging markets, affecting their financial stability. Public perception of the Fed's actions is also crucial. People look to the Fed for reassurance and guidance during uncertain times. If the public loses confidence in the Fed's ability to manage the economy, it could lead to panic and further economic instability. Looking ahead, the Fed will need to remain vigilant and adaptable. They must be prepared to adjust their policies in response to changing economic conditions. The path forward is uncertain, but the Fed's commitment to maintaining economic stability remains steadfast. As Jerome Powell and his colleagues continue their tightrope walk, the world watches with bated breath. Their decisions will shape the future of the economy, and their ability to navigate this challenging period will be a testament to their expertise and resolve. In conclusion, the Fed's dilemma is a complex and high-stakes balancing act. Their actions will have profound implications for the economy, and their ability to manage this tightrope walk will be critical in determining the future economic landscape. Bond market jitters, a sign of things to come. So, what does the bond market think about all of this? Well, they're not exactly thrilled. Remember that inverted yield curve we talked about? Yeah, it's still there, and it's not looking pretty. The bond market is essentially telling us that they're worried about the future. They see storm clouds on the horizon, and they're not taking any chances. This is not a good sign, folks. The bond market is often seen as a leading indicator of the economy. When the bond market gets nervous, we should all be paying attention. Okay, so we've talked about this housing bubble, but how does it actually affect you, the homeowner? Well, if you bought your house recently, chances are you paid way more than it's actually worth, and if interest rates keep going up, your monthly mortgage payments could skyrocket too. This is especially true if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, but we'll get to that in a minute. The adjustable rate mortgage trap. Remember those adjustable rate mortgages, or ARMS? They were really popular a few years ago when interest rates were super low. Seemed like a good deal at the time, right? Well, not so much anymore. Now that interest rates are rising, those low introductory rates on arms are starting to expire. And when that happens, monthly payments can jump by hundreds, even thousands of dollars overnight. Ouch! Investors. Beware, the tide is turning. Investors, listen up. The real estate market is undergoing a seismic shift, and if you're not prepared, you could find yourself in a precarious situation. The days of easy money and ever-increasing property values are coming to an end. It's time to face the new reality. You're not off the hook either. Just because you've diversified your portfolio with rental properties doesn't mean you're safe. In fact, you might be more vulnerable than you think. Remember all those rental properties you scooped up, thinking the good times would never end? Well, think again. The market dynamics are changing, and the strategies that worked in the past may no longer be effective. It's crucial to stay informed and adapt to the evolving landscape. This housing bubble is about to burst, and the repercussions could be severe. The signs are all around us, rising interest rates, increasing inventory, and a slowdown in buyer demand. These factors are converging to create a perfect storm that could deflate property values significantly. And when it does, you could be left holding the bag. As prices fall, the equity you've built up in your properties could evaporate overnight. This isn't just a minor correction. It's a potential market collapse that could have long-lasting effects on your financial health. You could end up owing more on your mortgages than your properties are worth. That's called negative equity, and it's not a good look. Negative equity can trap you in a cycle of debt 
making it nearly impossible to sell or refinance your properties without taking a significant loss. And it's not just about the numbers on a balance sheet. Negative equity can have real, tangible impacts on your life. It can limit your financial flexibility, strain your relationships, and cause immense stress and anxiety. Plus, with the economy slowing down, the challenges don't stop there. A sluggish economy means fewer people are looking to rent, and those who are may not have the financial stability to commit to long-term leases. Finding renters could become a real challenge. The pool of potential tenants is shrinking, and competition among landlords is intensifying. You may find yourself lowering rents just to attract interest, which can further erode your profit margins. And even if you do find renters, they might not be able to pay as much as you're used to. Economic pressures are affecting everyone, and many tenants are struggling to make ends meet. Late payments and defaults could become more common, adding another layer of risk to your investment. It's a challenging environment, but it's not all doom and gloom. By staying informed and proactive, you can navigate these turbulent times. Consider diversifying your investments, exploring new markets, and staying flexible in your rental terms. The tide is turning, but with the right strategies, you can stay afloat and even thrive in the new real estate landscape. The clock is ticking. We've covered a lot of ground here, folks. But the message is clear. This housing bubble is about to burst. Remember the Case-Shiller Index. It's telling us that home prices are even higher now than they were during the peak of the 2008 bubble. And then there's that pesky inverted yield curve, flashing like a giant warning sign that a recession is on the horizon. The Fed stuck between a rock and a hard place, trying to tame inflation without crashing the economy. It's a tightrope walk, and they're running out of room to maneuver. Brace yourselves, homeowners. If you bought recently or have an adjustable rate mortgage, get ready for some tough times ahead. Your monthly payments could skyrocket, and you might even find yourself underwater on your mortgage. Investors, don't think you're immune either. Those rental properties could quickly turn into money pits if the market tanks. Look, I'm not trying to scare you, but I am trying to prepare you. This housing crisis is real, and it's coming soon to a neighborhood near you. So buckle up, folks. It's going to be a bumpy ride.